Hey everybody, GC Performance here, back with another video, and boy oh boy, have there been some spicy, spicy picks going around of some rumored and leaked bikes by Specialized. So in today's video, we're going to talk about everything that we can see in the leaked photos, talk about what's going on with these bikes and what changes they are, and is this new possible SL8, or what are they calling this bike, what's to come out. So, hopefully you guys enjoy, but this video has a lot of excitement behind it because of the fact of... My channel basically started off of the SL7 around COVID time of July of 2020 when the SL7 was just releasing and I did so much content on it. So it has been some times that I've been waiting for a new bike to even be talked about, even be hinted at. So I am very excited to see some press release on this bike or some leaked press release of this bike. But this was the leaked photo at hand and it was a photo taken at the Quick Step team, what appears to be a Tarmac SL7 at first glance, but when you start taking some deeper looks at it, we can see there are some significant changes to this thing. Uh, some people might not like, like this, uh, like this bulbous head tube, but we'll get into that and my thoughts of this in the future. But there are some other changes just to this bike, not just a head tube. Some minute changes that might not strike the eye at first, but I have a feeling that they're really going after this bike and making the Tarmac what it originally was, which was their climbing bike. And it's following the trend of every other bike company out there where they're taking their, before they had this like uh, one mixed cluster of an aero climbing bike. Now you're starting to see companies really go back to their full on lightweight climbing bike. Like we just saw with, uh, um, I think, I'm sorry, you had Factor with the release of their brand new climbing bike or revamped climbing bike, which was a super uber ultra lightweight bike. You have Canyon, which released their lightweight uh, climbing bike as well. You have like, companies like Cervelo, which have their S5, but then they also have their R5, which is a crazy lightweight bike. And I start to think that we're going to see brands kind of go more back to a dedicated climbing bike and then a dedicated aero bike, which could be hinting on the future, whatever, whatever you want to take it as. But you can definitely see that they made the front end a little bit more aero, but the back size bike a lot more lighter. So who knows? Let's take a look at this bike right here. So Let's bring up this pig right here. With a closer image on here. So first and foremost, what we obviously see is this, my face out here, is this cockpit area, this head tube. This kind of, everyone calls it the pregnant belly, everyone calls it a bulbous, everyone calls it a whale belly. But they took the head tube and elongated it out to make it a little bit more of an aero profile. Definitely to adapt to that bigger three to one UCI rule. Um, and a lot of companies, which you'll see, which they usually would take their bike and make it more aero going backwards, Specialized doing the opposite. And I'm sure it has some kind of purpose for it. Keep in mind, Specialized has their wind tunnel, their wind tunnel, wind, W-I-N, tunnel. Uh, but yes, they, they do a lot of research development. They do a lot of design behind that wind tunnel. So I'm sure there are some aerodynamic benefits to going out in front. It even doesn't just have a flat shape. It kind of has this kind of point to here and then goes down into the fork and makes it a little bit more aero. And they also changed the fork, which before the fork was just a straight off on here, they made this front end a much more better curvature to the front. To me, it still looks like it holds the same SL7 bearings and the headset spacer caps on here because this looks to be an SL7 stem, which will always be nice because of the fact that if you don't want to run a one-piece barn stem like their new Reval Rapide uh, integrated barn stem combo, you can still run a two-piece barn stem on here, which is very nice. And that's what everyone else is assuming on this picture. They're like, hey, where's a new barn stem that's released for the SL7? Um, probably because it's a team camp, they're getting fitted to their bikes. People are trying out different bar widths, stem sizes. It's much easier to go ahead and swap out stuff for riders there as well. But I have a feeling that this is definitely going to make a better uh, aerodynamics for the front end. And my, I'm no aerophysiologist, I'm no engineer, but I'm thinking if, they're, if they can create or close the gap as close as they can from the handlebars to the head tube, get rid of that dirty airspace because the first thing that hits the wind is going to be your wheel and then your handlebar. If they can bring this bike closer to all that front end like a motorcycle and have all one piece there, uh, it's going to negate how much dirty air goes into that. Just my guess. So that's what they're probably trying to achieve here and maybe they did achieve it by doing this design. They're not just going to put out a, a bike that looks radical, looks different with no purpose behind it. So I'm actually really excited to see how this rides and uh, really excited to see actually the, the back end of it. They also looks like they changed the spaces up here, whereas the SL7 now, it looks like the space is almost reverse. The back end of the spaces should be behind here, but I'm excited to work on it. I'm assuming it's going to be the same bearings and cable routing as they were before. 
Um, also, what we can see in this picture is a change to the back end. So the, the theme of this bike is what everyone's been hinting at, is that it's a Venge in the front, an Athos in the rear, super lightweight in the back end. Uh, this is the head to bear. You guys can see a better look there. Seems to be an SL7 again, like I said, but a really crazy looking cutout for that top cap there. It almost looks reverse, but it is a very sharp curve there. So again, just making deeper aerofoil profiles to add, uh, to, add to a nicer aerodynamic set. Then we have the seat stay portion of it, which you can see looks very thin. Very, very thin, almost like these companies, like a factor or something like that. It doesn't look as aggressive as the SL7 used to be. Even right here by the seat post area as well, it looks like they even slimmed this thing down, the cut right here. But a lot of people didn't notice this either, this bottom bracket area. This doesn't look to be as thick of, of a carbon area. And this was also brings me back to what I said about them having a strict climbing bike and a tarmac and really trying to weigh this thing down and get it lighter. I'm almost to a point where if they can achieve this aerodynamics up front here, and I've always said this, and I wish, I, I don't know if it's gonna come true or not, I really hope it does. If they can take whatever carbon they're using for that Athos that they have, which is crazy stupid light, like 6.2 kilos out of the box for a full S-Works, and they can just make the Tarmac SL7 or SL8 or whatever bike this is in with, a, with the Athos carbon fiber and just make this in crazy light with aero profiles, it will be a bike for the ages. So I'm hoping and I'm insinuating and assuming that this bike out of the box would be like a 6.7, 6.7, 6.6 kilo bike. Now, I know that's just me really excited because I'm sure it's going to come with a Roval Rapids in there. But, um, man, if they make this thing super light, because this BB looks very, very tiny. The chain stays look very tiny. The seat stays look very tiny. This seat tube area up here looks a lot tinier. Also, the down tube right here looks a little bit more ovalized. So... I'm sure they changed their, their tubing profile a lot. And with this bike, not only does it come the new shape tubing, and there's not as much aero profiles here, but they also did change on here another picture, which is a seat post. So I think they really are going after grams here and trying to achieve that. They already changed a full integrated bar and stem combination to make it lighter weight. They're coming out with a new seat post to fit the SL8, which is not crazy. I mean, you got to think back to the SL5, SL6, they had the D-shaped seat post, the SL6, the SL7, those different shaped seat posts, and now to the SL8 as well, uh, of what I'm assuming this is going to be. This is a top clamp seat post, which I'm going to guess is going to be uber light, similar to the Athos. And then also on this bike back here, they have a zero degree setback, which to me looks like a little bit of a different seat post as well. Interesting to see these white wall tires back here. I don't know what those are. I don't know if that's a new tire or maybe a new cotton tire, but very cool to see like a really early glimpse of this bike. I'm, I'm extremely excited to see what's going to happen on this bike, when it is releasing, what it is, and uh, also price point. And if I have to guess on price point here, again, I, I haven't seen prices. I don't know anything on these bikes. If I have to guess on pricing, following what their Epic released at, their new and improved Epic, I might say that it might stay around the same price or might come down in price to be a little bit more affordable for today's economy. Um, in my previous videos where I talked about the what bikes are selling, obviously I mentioned the high-end bikes are selling because the people with money aren't affected by the current economy state. So we'll see. People who can buy S-Works usually buy S-Works no, no matter what. But very, very, very good looking bike. But that is going to do it for this video. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? When, when do you think this bike is gonna release? Are you guys excited for this bike? Um, do you think foreshadowing, if them going to a slimmer back area of this bike, do you think it's foreshadowing that they're going to have an aero bike relaunch later on down the road? I would love that, and that's what I could only hope for, but I'm so excited to see new specialized content and new specialized bikes in our store. It's very hard. People are saying, oh, these are minute changes. I was waiting for something crazy. I was waiting for something radical because the SL7 literally has been, and you can say what you want, one of the hottest bikes out on the market for the past three years. Has dominated the men's UCI World Championship races. Has been winning bike for a Vuelta, a Giro, uh, stage wins, whatever it is. Um, it's a bike that people build their bikes after, and uh, they definitely do put their, 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 uh, their bike to the test and people do want to recreate their bikes after this bike so it's hard to take a bike as iconic as the sl7 
and make massive changes to it and be like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, this bike is going to be light years faster to it. You're in the world where pretty much everything you do is very marginal changes, but it's for the benefit of the rider. And um, that's what you have to look at it as. And I'm sure that once you get on the bike and you ride it for long periods of time, it's going to be something that you do experience. So I can't wait to see in person. I can't wait to get my hands on it and actually weigh this thing. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.